Sure. Good. That brings us to Toastmaster Mensch number three, Larry Shaw. Larry is giving a speech titled, What Do We Mean by Smart? Larry Shaw, what do we mean by smart? Hello, Toastmasters. We all hear people say, boy, is he smart. Is she intelligent? And we tend to think of smarter people as being globally smarter. Like a smart person is superior intellect in all areas, whereas the average person has a smaller intelligence. But this is not really true. What separates us are aptitudes and emotions. We're smart in some ways and not smart in other ways. So the first area of intelligence is what we call aptitudes. And an aptitude is a mental ability in an area. I'm sure a lot of you have know somebody who has a terrible sense of direction. They have a low aptitude for geography. And there are other people that never get lost. It's a higher aptitude for geography. There are people who are very good with language, with rhyming. They can just get up there like rappers who can rhyme. Maybe you don't like rap artists, but they know how to use language. Then there are other people who are very good in mathematics or have a great grasp of mechanics, of matter in motion. They can be good in physics and engineering. These are all aptitudes. Now, aptitudes in of themselves are really useless because you need to have something to control the aptitude. And that's called emotional intelligence. And one major difference between emotional intelligence and aptitudes is that you can measure an aptitude. You can see how well a person does on a math test. They can see how well the person writes. But what about emotions that control the aptitudes? Now, for example, when we have this expression, a jerk, we say he's a stupid person. But we don't call retarded people jerks. In fact, a lot of jerks have very normal intelligence. It's just that there's something that they can't, they can't use what they've got. Emotional in intelligence that's impaired is what we call mental illness, having emotional problems, psychological difficulties, which prevent us from functioning on a high level in terms of using our aptitudes. Now you take, uh, it causes self-sabotage. To make an analogy, just imagine that an airplane is like a bunch of aptitudes, and the pilot is the emotional intelligence. If you have high emotional intelligence, you'll be successful, even if you don't have many great aptitudes. Now, emotional intelligence, as I said, is very difficult to measure. It's something that we're born not having. In other words, why is it that we won't let somebody sign a legal contract until they're 21? because we assume that at 20, they don't have the emotional intelligence to make a sensible judgment. But there are some people who never develop emotional intelligence. And emotional intelligence works with aptitudes. And if you have it really high in both areas, they can call you a genius. Now, I believe that the greatest musical genius that ever lived was Ludwig von Beethoven. Now, he didn't have more aptitude than Bach or Schubert or Brahms or uh, Mozart but he had emotional intelligence that they didn't really have. As far as I know, when Bach or Mozart or Schubert would compose something, as fast as their hands could write down the music, that's how fast it was written. And since they were so incredibly talented, what they wrote was pretty darn good and often fabulous. But Beethoven brought music to a higher level, not because he had more of an aptitude, but because of his emotions. You see, Beethoven would do something that these other guys didn't do. He would think about his music. He would be imaginative about composing. For example, uh, Franz Joseph Haydn in the 1700s developed the symphony form. And every form, every symphony had the same structure. First movement, moderate pace. Second movement, a slow largo. Third movement, a minuet, three-fourth time. And the fourth movement, a scherzo. Well, Beethoven changed that. He made, he did it differently. So in his ninth symphony, he changed the whole thing. The first part of the symphony, the first movement, is as long as an entire symphony of the classic era. Second movement is a quick scherzo, and of course the last movement is a chorale singing. And the other thing is that when he would compose something, he would say, wait a second, let me think about this, let me do it over again. So when he was, he had one opera, Fidelio, 
he composed three overtures, because each one he was unsatisfied with. So his genius was a combination of this emotional intelligence and great aptitude. Now, an example of somebody in the opposite direction was a real jerk. He was a father of a friend of mine. He was academically brilliant. He pulled high marks. He was almost like a genius in mathematics. But he was very introverted. Now, he, because of low emotional intelligence, he didn't make the right career choices. He should have been an academic, correct? What did he decide to do? He became a commissioned salesman of corrugated boxes, something that you need when you have, when you're very outgoing and very uneducated. That's the perfect job. The result, he was miserable his whole life, suffered from depression, never made a decent living. Well, I want to end this by making you who would feel better. If, if, if you've been in your life always told that you're not that smart, you're not less intelligent globally than other people. It's just that you have aptitudes in areas that nobody gives a darn about. <laughs> and so you have the mis this the bad luck of having abilities in areas nobody cares. But you're still a person who's worthwhile. It's just that no one cares. Fellow Toastmasters. <laughs>